back to Ridiculously Terrible. This is episode three. Here we are, back again at the lake. It's beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful outside. There's the cow building behind us. If you know, you know. If you don't, um, good luck finding it, knowing it. Recently, I've not been doing the absolute most with my time, but I've just been really taking this time to self-reflect and also I've been getting this overwhelming feeling um, of like now I feel like I'm doing too many things at once and I kind of need to slow down. For the past couple of days I've been working on my interior styling portfolio. I really want to do some freelance work now and um, I just want to get my ideas out there and then also just so people know what I have to offer because um, once you see it I think you'll love it you know um, I so I've been working on like my portfolio I've been I've just been chilling honestly I don't fucking be doing much because there's just a lot there's just nothing to do it's been snowing, it's been raining, and it hasn't been that nice out, and so I don't want to go outside when it's literally like zero degrees. But um, now today it's 60 degrees. I'm not really outside, I'm literally in my car. Um, but whatever, it's beautiful. I could, I'm feeling the sun rays from my windshield, um, so that's all that matter. That's all that matters. So recently 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 I have been getting this overwhelming feeling of I've just been pulling myself in so many different directions and it's just so incredibly hard to like really nail down just one thing that I want to do make one thing my priority right now um I have the podcast here, and I do want to keep doing this podcast. I want to keep vlogging. I absolutely love being on YouTube. I do have another company called Tonier Creations. That is my fashion styling and interior design creative collective, where um, I just share and curate some fun fashion stuff that I'm loving and some interior design stuff that I'm loving. I also do want to start freelancing as an interior stylist and therefore that's why I started my portfolio so I can land some jobs, um, start working with clients, building my clientele and getting my name out there. But right now um, I am focusing on this podcast, I'm focusing on vlogging. Um, this is where I kind of want to be right now. I think this is a great place for me to start. And um, I think I have a hard time trusting the process. I kind of want things to come so fast. And I just need to trust the process. I need to allow it to take its steps. Um, I need to take one step at a time instead of 15 steps at one time, you know? I always want to be ahead of the game when I don't even know the game. And I think that's that's just my personality, honestly, and that's just me. But um, with this overwhelming feeling of being, or of feeling like I'm doing too much now, I am kind of like in this limbo of losing a little bit of my control, and um, I just want to grasp my control again. I think what's been causing this overwhelming feeling of like I need to be doing like a bajillion things at once um, is rooted in childhood trauma and I feel like a lot of us have just roadblocks in our lives and possible causes could be of that childhood trauma. Now talking about my childhood trauma. Um, being a child, I really just, I wasn't able to, like, express my emotions and feelings and thoughts um, just straight up outright to anyone because that's just not the way I was taught. 
um, from my parents, uh, from family members, and even at school. Like, I've always just been taught that, like, if you are going through a hard time, you need to suck it up because everyone else is also going through a hard time. And I think that's such a stupid way to think because, yes, everybody's going through a hard time, but also, like, for you and everyone else, I mean, they need to work through their hard times and they need to actually process that. And if they don't process it, they just like bundle it up and then shove it in the back of their head and call it a day. I think that's such a terrible thing that we teach our children and just people that like if you're like, say you're crying, you know, you're a child, you're crying. And for me, I was just told to stop crying because I'm being annoying and then to just like... I literally would just like go to my bedroom and then start bawling under the covers and repressing everything that, um, you know, that I'm feeling. This lady's walking her dog and she's smoking. Mood. Anyways, but yeah, I think that we need to be, we need to work on allowing people to just express their fucking feelings. Like, let them let them feel let them have emotions you know we're all fucking human we all deserve to feel one way or another and you like if you're on the receiving end of that you don't have to respond in any sort of way you can ask that person oh do you like do you need like a shoulder to cry on or are you looking for like advice most of the time i'm just looking for um, a shoulder to cry on and being a child I didn't have a shoulder to cry on and so I would cry on my own fucking shoulder and I would just be so angry all the time because I wouldn't know how to process my emotions because I wasn't taught how to and I wasn't able to walk myself through the steps of my emotions at that point in time of my life you know um yeah I think I've just been having a hard time um, doing that with a lot of people in my life and so I feel like I've come to a roadblock and I haven't been able to like share a lot of the things that I'm doing just because I don't feel proud of it because I feel as if they wouldn't feel proud of it but I need to get more in touch and just like me and if I'm proud of it that's all that matters and I say that all the time like and I think it's almost like an affirmation and manifestation it's like I don't care what they're thinking about as long as I think it is good it is good I think a lot of people need to adopt that as well like stop seeking validation from the outside world or from certain people because you can validate yourself and especially if you didn't have the if you didn't have the like ability to I lost my train of thought. Um, childhood trauma is just something we all need to go through and work through. Um, not go through, but reflect on, especially if we're, you know, since we're adults now. Um, it definitely has changed my perspective and outlook on a lot of the ways that I'm feeling and um, my emotions. As a kid, I just, like even now, just like being able to think of things and then say them out loud, like it's so hard for me to think of things and then start saying them out loud because I wasn't allowed to like speak out of my turn basically and that's like it's just like because I wasn't allowed to speak out of my turn or um, just say what was on my mind I was repressing a lot of those things and I was keeping a lot of those things to myself because I was like oh nobody cares like nobody's gonna want to listen to what I have to say and I absolutely fucking hate that. Honestly, that makes my blood boil to reflect on that and be like, why didn't nobody let me talk, you know? Um, 
in school, I was always told that I was too talkative. And so, um, like my reports from my teachers when they would have, um, those, whatever, where it's called teacher parent conferences, they would always tell my parents that I talk too damn much. And I'm like, and like, would you rather have a child just sit there and like be silent like a fucking robot as if there's like this set book of just things that we have to learn or do. And that's the only way we have to do it in this book in our society and I don't want to do that like I was always stepping outside the box I was always such a creative child I was I was very hands-on not very much like oh I'm gonna sit here and like go through a lecture for you know the entire day in school I absolutely hated that that was not me that's why I took so many different like art classes in my high school um years because It was just a time for me to be more creative and hands-on and I feel like a lot of the teachers in my in our like my art departments in my high school were very understanding and they were creative people themselves too obviously that's why they're art teachers and they just they just understood it so I don't really know if you guys know what I mean but that's what I mean bring it back to when I was a child Um, I was always told that I talked too damn much and that made me feel like ashamed of myself, um, ashamed that I was talking too much, that I was conversing with my fellow classmates, you know, um, sorry that I wanted to make friends, not sorry. Um, and also just like, I think kids have a lot of fucking creativity and they're very, Um, open-minded because they're not being flooded by all the societal pressures that we feel as adults now Um, I think it's so fucking important to let children be able to express their creativity express their emotions express their feelings and share it with their classmates share it with their teachers share it with their family members their parents Um, of course with people you trust teaching your kids you know how to trust certain individuals and then also like learn red flags but anyways that's besides the point um yeah I'm just so sick of being repressed and I want to just I've been wanting to break out of my shell for so long and just be like free I really want to just tap into this feeling of being fucking weird and I think being weird is okay um there's nothing wrong with being weird um I saw this uh video on Instagram a while back and it was about how like the happiest people are also the weirdest people and um they're just more in touch and in tune with their emotions and their feelings and they're also more in touch with reality and the realisticness of I don't even know if that's a word but the realisticness of um like a life you only have one life you might as well make the best of it you know you might as well do everything that you want to do um stop listening to what people want you to do um start doing you know what you want to do this goes on into me being into my self help um also healing journey and era i am so blessed and so grateful to have the means to have a therapist and then go to therapy i go to therapy like once um a week and it really helps me be more vulnerable it really helps me um, be in tune with my feelings and emotions um and that lately like my feeling of being overwhelmed I was able to like break it down and just really talk through the steps of it um whereas if I didn't have that outlet like I mean therapy doesn't work for everybody um I know there's tons of people who've tried therapy and it just doesn't work for them I think for me it was when I started going to therapy it got to the point where 
I was feeling very much like, oh, fuck, like, I can't help myself anymore. I need someone to walk me through the steps. I need someone to help me out. And that's where I discovered therapy. And then um, from there, it just went up. And yes, in your healing era, there's going to be a lot in your healing era, your healing journey. There's going to be a lot of ups and downs. And you really just have to appreciate all those ups and downs because nothing is going to be like 100% one line straight up, you know? It is so wild around here right now. There's so many people. This guy just pulled up so damn fast up like across from me and he was playing music so loud and um, making me a little nervous. I, that's something I need to work on too is that like strangers um, not always stranger danger you know be aware and be self aware um, but also like don't just expect bad things to happen or else they are going to happen you know like that's literally manifestation if, but if you manifest and you trust yourself and you just you know rethink that stranger danger mindset um, I think it can really change your perspective on people, you know? That's another thing with the childhood trauma is that, like, when I say childhood trauma, um, I don't mean, like, literally, like, something physically happened to you. It can be absolutely anything that results in, um, you having a traumatic event happen to you or that causing a traumatic event I don't know if any of that made sense to be honest but if you understand if you get what I'm feeling if you get what I'm saying um childhood trauma it's a very it's basically this time of unlearning all these things that we learned as a child that are wrong and that don't serve us any more purpose as we are now adults um, stranger danger being for one of them I don't think that serves a lot of big purpose anymore because yes there's always going to be terrible people out there there's always going to be some crazy damn people um, but that's not everybody you can't expect everyone to just be like weird or um, weird in the sense of like danger stranger danger um, you know you just can't expect everyone to be um, a danger to you, a danger to society. Um, with the stranger danger mindset for children, I think it's important to teach our children. I don't have kids. I don't know why I talk about this all the time. I guess it goes into like my childhood trauma stuff. Um, but children, I think it's a bad thing to be teaching them stranger danger because then you teach them that like all these people are terrible, bad people. This is probably the way that I was just me that I was just okay this um this doesn't apply to everyone this applies to the way that I was taught I was grown up I was grown up I grew up um that like stranger danger everyone is dangerous anything is dangerous and if you go outside you're gonna get killed you're gonna get shot you're gonna get stolen um you're gonna get trafficked um I think that keeps us in such a small-minded mindset that it limits our ability to connect to other individuals. It's just, I'm, I don't really know how to describe it. Um, I don't know if I'm getting it across the board that well, but yeah, we just can't be teaching our kids that everyone you meet is bad you know or has bad intentions i don't think everyone i meet has bad intentions i don't think everyone that i meet or come across um is like a danger to society or is a danger to me i think it is a lot of the media also plays out how dangerous like these certain areas these certain cities are and a lot of fear mongering happens in media and we need to stop fucking fear mongering we need to stop with the headlines that are like these many people got shot in this area therefore this area is a bad place i just absolutely hate that i just hate it 
Um, I hate the media. I absolutely just want to be free. Yeah. I am just, I'm in my healing era. And I don't think about myself often. I don't, um, I don't try to please myself often. I don't uh, validate myself often. And I think that is like a big thing that we miss as humans is that we often are, well, for me, I'm a very, peop- I'm a big people pleaser. I will always try to please someone um, whether or not I feel like they like me. I will just always try to please you because I think being nice goes a long way. And um, I think everyone needs to be a little fucking nicer these days and understanding as well. I think we hold a lot of judgments. Um, And yes, you're allowed to have your opinions. You're allowed to make judgments, but also um, keep those damn judgments to yourself. You know, if you're going to tell someone, keep it between the two of you. Like, I don't need I don't need some motherfucker out here, um, you know, sharing their judgment about me. I don't know. Just just like just like keep your damn judgments to yourself, you know, Um I was listening to the Emma Chamberlain podcast and she was kind of talking about that. She was talking about how if you're going to gossip, you got some rumors, um, keep it to your goddamn self because the more you spread it, the more that it's going to get twisted and the more that it's just going to have a much larger effect on somebody's character, someone's personality than you think, you know? If you hear something, if you see something in the media, in the news outlets, um, someone says something, like, make sure it's factual. And um, if it isn't and you believe it, then, um, like Emma Chamberlain said in her podcast, she was like, if you believe it, then okay. But if you want to change your mind, that's okay too. Like, you're allowed to change your mind. I'm kind of getting... I'm kind of running out of ideas and um, just words to say. And so I think this is just where I'm going to end the podcast. This is a really short one, um, but that's okay. I'll see you guys on the next one. Mm, We'll probably talk about some more stuff. Um, Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. If you've gotten this far, um, please like, share, and make sure to subscribe if you're watching on the YouTube. Well, that's the only place to watch it, actually. So subscribe, you know, hit the like button again, Um, hit the subscribe button again, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.